So I'm taking shelter here on the conclusive part of, of Seamus Murphy's part two cork about and I'm taking shelter under the bronze cast of Michael Collins. This bronze cast is very fine um, hero figure of 104 centimeters so it's larger than life and it's based on the the um, original Carrera marble um, figurative head that Seamus would have um, been commissioned for back 1948 so this was a commission that fell through and um, the the figurative head would have sat in his studio in Watercourse Road for quite a while and then in 1966 um, the Sculptural Outdoor uh, Committee of Cork came and asked him to, uh, to place a bronze casting of Michael um, in Fitzgerald's Park. So it's been sitting here since. And there are two other um, figurative heads here which um, we've learned are less abstract in style. He would have um, kept the abstract style more for the sculptural large pieces but for figurative heads um, he would have kept them more in the trying to get the personality of the person really to come through. He often said himself and uh, when he was interviewed that he preferred working with people, he enjoyed working with figurative heads. Um, he would have had the sitters come into his studio, the scullery as he called it, in Watercourse Road and um, he would have gotten basically to learn a bit about the personality of the person and try to get that through coming through in his work not just the physical appearance of the person and it, he often said himself that sometimes if the person was was a very strong personality that this would have an influence upon the work and sometimes his work might have um, suffered a little bit if the person and himself didn't quite see eye to eye but clearly he was very impressed with um, with Michael Collins so I'm going to take you over now to another bronze cast figurative bust that Seamus did and that one is of Eamon de Valera and um, Seamus was commissioned for five presidential busts and that, they were the five presidents of his lifetime and so I'm going to be able to explain to you over there a little bit more about what was involved in um, bronze casting when you had a sitter at the time. So his daughter, daughter Orla explains the lovely process by which these um, sculptural pieces come about. So the sitter would have come into, um, into his studio and he would have made originally a sculpture from clay. So he would have sat and worked with the clay and rolling it into tiny little balls and filling it in on all the different parts of the face to get an actual model of the sitter's face. Then this would have been wrapped in um, what would have been like plaster bandages as such, nearly the process from which most people are familiar with if you've ever broken an egg or a leg or an arm. And that would have sat overnight. And um, she, Orla recalls lovely stories of the excitement once the clay was taken out um, once it had gone hard inside in the plaster um, mould as such, the clay would be scooped out and then plaster would have been poured in after it had been, obviously, the inside would have been um, uh, treated with Vaseline first. So she said that when this would have hardened, the excitement by which they'd go into the, to the studio and he would crack open the actual plaster bandages, which are now hardened on the outside, and the actual plaster model would be revealed. This was the really exciting part because this is where all the expression truly came from. Now, in this case, when they were making a bronze casting, the actual plaster um, cast would have been sent to the foundry and um, originally that would have been in England but then it came, moved to Dublin so they'd have all gone up to the foundry to the to the den of the Vulcan as they as she referred to it as. And what 
what a talented artistic family we're talking about here. Seamus Murphy had married Mairead. Mairead was the daughter of Joseph Higgins, the sculptor, and Catherine Turnbull. And Catherine and Joseph had met in Crawford School of Art and it was history repeating itself. Seamus and Mairead went on also to meet in Crawford School of Art and went on to have three beautiful children. Colm, who's a painter, Bevin Martin, who's the textile designer, and Orla, who's the author. But what was really lovely is that Seamus um, went on to be able to do something beautiful to commemorate the work of his father-in-law. Um, Joseph Higgins. So Joseph died very young from tuberculosis and he, in his lifetime he had never actually cast any of his own sculptures in bronze due to the expense of the material. So after his death, quite a few years later, to preserve Joseph's work, um, Seamus went on to bronze cast 19 of Joseph Higgins's sculptures, one of which is sitting here and has pride a place in the center of the lake and it's called Boy in the Lake. And another one of which you're probably familiar with as it's sitting in our permanent collection, it's called on Stracker up here or the Stracker Man. Learned about it is that when he passed away in 1975, that there was nearly 134 plaster casts of figurative, of figurative heads in his studio at the time. And a sculptor called Ken Thompson from Ballycotton, whose work we know and treasure, held those and kept them safe for quite a long time until the Crawford Art Gallery took them over. And they're now in our permanent collection, along with many more works of Seamus's. So we've up to 169 of his works in our permanent collection here in Cork. So we hope you've enjoyed our Cork about in, on Seamus Murphy here in the city and it's just such a lovely way to commemorate such an influential and talented local artist here in Cork.